But when we look at this, this part of it, now the question becomes if the Creek people, and I can delve deep in that, you know what I mean? I hate doing par paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. I love quoting. But if we dive deep and we go into what it identified the Creek nation as, there was not a Creek Indian that was not identified as a Negro. So I'll say real simple, where's the Negroes at? Mm. Oh, they're the freedmen now. Yep. They're the freedmen begging to be identified mm. by those who was once not even considered Creek. That's documented. That's documented. That there was a different, there was a different class of Creeks. The Creeks who were Creeks all looked like Negroes or considered Negroes to be Creeks. Mm. And then there was the mulattoes. Mm -hmm. There was the mixed breeds. There was those who looked even white. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to leave this show without literally quoting that statement mm. because that is more powerful than anything else when it comes to our identity. Mm -hmm. And me saying to people, stop looking for acceptance. That's right. But the only way I can do that, if I take that away from you, I have to provide you with something. And I'm providing them with the historical narratives and facts. Mm -hmm. And this ain't me. Don't get mad. Don't want to kill me. Just mm -hmm. understand we all have the ability to research and read. Mm -hmm. This is not me wanting to disrupt a, a system or society. This is me saying that we have been separated and taken away from our identity so much so that people who are claiming to be African-American don't even feel that connection. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is African about you? What do you mm. do that's African? Mm. Let's do one better. Let's simplify all that. Let's simplify all of it. You're saying we all came together if you accept being African-American. I came on the ship that you came on. Mm. Yet for some reason, Mr. British, Mr. German, Mr. Spaniard, the applications and surveys don't say British-American. Mm -hmm. The job applications don't say German-American. You're all foreigners if I'm a foreigner. Why is it that you uniquely want to say African-American? Good people. What's up? What's good, man? Blessed be your host, Caleb Smith. Today, we have a very special guest in the building. Blessing our new space, our new studio. Chief say cool, man. He's doing amazing work. He's been doing that for decades. And we're about to talk about something in your words, on your live, that's going to get some people in trouble. <laughs> and they're feeling somewhat. Right, man, right, that's never right. a bad thing. But right. first off, thank you so much, man, for pulling up for your time, uh, the scheduling getting all this stuff coordinated on a short notice. I appreciate you greatly for that. Yeah, and I appreciate you, Caleb. I mean, I, I really appreciate being here. And thank you for inviting. And, and I know our schedule has been like, it's been real hectic. You know what I mean? We try to make it work. Yes. Yeah, man. So um, thank you. And yes. thank your team for everything that they're doing. Much love. Chief, what's your name? Pronunciations, right? Uh, In the South, you know, people, they can drag A's, E's, yeah, things like that. Yeah, can you yeah. please break down our names are supposed to be yeah. pronounced in phonetics? No problem. So uh, first and foremost, our people speak Punki Hichiti. Mm. Our people speak Hichiti. It's a Totanic Mayan language that has been forgotten amongst oh, most. Wow. But it's still spoken amongst, well, partially spoken amongst the Mikosuki people, which are identified as Seminoles. Mm. And that's what we are. We're Seminoles. Mm -hmm. So, Animiki Siku, Holam Hachitalami, Yamasi Hajo, Miku, Yamasi, Yate, Miku, Fusi, Erepaka Hajo, Atukasi, Matle. This is my heritage. And, and what it was, it was traditionally when you met a native person, they would identify themselves, their bloodline and their 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 honor. And their mm -hmm. honor is their grandfathers and those who they um, that were warriors. So in my situation, what I just said was I am Siku Hajo or Siku Hidden Eagle of the Yamasi Indian tribe. I'm the tree chief mm -hmm. of the Yamasi nation. And my grandfathers are Arapaka, which is also known as Sam Jones, and mm -hmm. Tukasia Motley, also known as John Hicks. And so I have a heritage which is, spans on both sides of my family, mm -hmm. which is why I'm considered a full blood. Mm -hmm. So uh, John Hicks, Tukasia Motley, didn't necessarily have the best history, but mm -hmm. that's on my mother's side. Mm -hmm. On my father's side, I'm Jones, which is Sam Jones. Mm -hmm. um, so a part of the native heritage and culture is always starting the conversation out with the language and identifying yourself. Mm, that's beautiful. Growing up, you know, here in the South, 
so many people have stories of Big Mama, you know, telling us, right. hey, know that right. y'all have like native blood in you. And you know, sometimes we'll try to like throw that aside. Uh, she's just talking. I know that slave ships is a real big thing too. How many of us do you feel like black people are actually native to this landmass? You know, it's it's crazy. Um, so for your 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 watchers and listeners, so much of the history has been taken away from us. Mm-hmm. And so much of it is relevant that we fall victim and prey to the narrative that was given to us through the education system. For sure. So we have to identify and address that first, that a lot of what we believe is taught to us. Mm-hmm. Now, if we take the fact that those who was teaching us kept us out of their educational system. That's right. Right? They did it purposely. Yeah. This was them teaching their grandchildren and their grand, you know, grandfathers and, mm-hmm. you know, they, they were teaching their children their history. So a lot of what we learned was them perpetuating what they wanted us to know, but not in the sense of truth and facts. Mm. The truth and facts lied into the narratives that they provided within the documentation that they gave in their memoirs. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah. So we aren't being educated on the memoirs of the colonists. Mm-hmm. We're being educated on the system that they provided that says this is what you need to believe because we have to support. Yeah. What we fabricated That's right. in our justice system. And what I mean by that is those narratives where you have inside of the South Carolina journals, the mm-hmm. Georgian journals, Native people coming to get an ear mm-hmm. for their judicial system to mm-hmm. say, hey, me and my children have been wrongfully put into servitude and we are Indians. Mm-hmm. That That happened because... The perception of what a Negro or African was. Mm-hmm. And we're not looking at this. We're not even deep diving in this because what TV says, what history says is the Indian people look this way. There you go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And 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 okay, so let's 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 do one better. Okay. Me and you can sit back and we'll watch a TV show, right? Mm-hmm. Where there was uh cowboys and Indians. That's right. Me and you can obviously see. This is a white man pretending to be an Indian. There you go. We, yeah. we see the wigs. Yep. You know what I mean? And for my sisters, mm-hmm. who know, mm-hmm. right? You know a bad lace front when you see one, yes, <laughs> right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yes. you know, when, when you're looking at this, you know it. You, you're seeing the pigmentation. You see the makeup. You see all these different things. Mm-hmm. And we, we circumvent that and we forget that white people were pretending to be blacks at one time on these same movies, right? Still do. Was blackface. Yes. And still do. Yeah. So and I'm, I'm saying all this to you because the question is basically a self-answering question if we are paying attention. See, what we bank on is that we no longer pay attention. We're so caught up in our world that we're not paying attention to the obvious. Mm. We circumvent the obvious now and say, this is what they did, this is what we do because it's all about us. And so my life now is about being slayed and all these different terminologies that society have and the millennials have. But the history, the identity, the culture of your people is more important than anything else. That's because right. if you don't know who you are, mm. you have no future. Yes, sir. So to go back to your question, how many of us could possibly be and or are Native American? Mm-hmm. I couldn't even give you an accurate number mm. because there were so many of us that was taken from America as Indians. And this mm-hmm. is documented mm-hmm. to the West Indies. Yes. So Caribbean. many of us in yep. Caribbeans, yep. which I'm pretty sure that's going to be a question later yep. on. Yep. So many of us that was written out as Negro. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's that's a large problem within itself mm-hmm. because we're not looking at the linguistics. Mm-hmm. Negro was not African. Negro was a description that the Spanish use. It's a Spanish word. Black. Yeah. It, it's black. Yeah. Right. And so anyone that was not European in color and nature was mm-hmm. considered black. Mm-hmm. That did not mean you were not native. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so much of the narrative, it, it gets so deep um, when you really deep dive into the conversation. Mm-hmm. And here's the problem. The problem lies in when you accept the fact that Big Mama said mm-hmm. and you say, oh, my grandmother was full blooded. And she had long flowing hair That's and right. all the different things. Silver. Yeah. Right. But she don't look like the Indians of today mm-hmm. and you don't look like the Indians today. You don't want to talk about who you are or possibly could be, or the fact that you do have an indigenous bloodline, Mm -hmm. right? Because of what we're being shown today. Mm. So um, you mentioned 
me and my Instagram posts and things like that. And I, every time I open my mouth now, the last couple posts, I'm like, I'm going to get in trouble for this because I'm changing the dynamics of what history has shown us and, and not doing it for me. It's not, it's, this is not me saying this is what I believe. This is what I think. This No, everything I do, I use the facts, mm -hmm. not black history and black narratives. Mm -hmm. I use white history mm -hmm. and white narrative. That's why it's called his story. Mm -hmm. So I use his story mm -hmm. to tell the truth because, again, it was against... Mm -hmm. the law for Negroes mm -hmm. or Indians to read. Yes, sir. People don't even question that it's part. Powerful. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? What were you hiding that you didn't want us to read? It's the history and the facts. It's the history and the facts. Yeah. So, again, I'm, I'm a, I, I, I give so much and I got so much in my head. Yeah, please. Um, you good. It, it goes back to, again, taking the pieces of the puzzle and painting the picture for yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so the picture says that there was a narrative a situation mm. that you needed to support what your cause was, mm. right? Yeah. So we use words in a way mm. that besuits us, that yeah. helps us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and so to basically say to you is this, there is a large population of people of color who can readily identify their grandmothers or great grandmothers being native, identifying themselves as native, because that was my story. That's right. Yet we walk away from it mm. because we don't look like what we've been programmed mm -hmm. to believe Native Americans look like. Mm. Now, with that, where it hurts us is because when we take the stories of Native Americans, and what history says Native Americans look like through the depictions, mm -hmm. the images, right? Mm -hmm. the, the written narratives, mm -hmm. it contradicts what we see today. That's right. It contradicts it. Yeah. And you cannot put a Native American into slavery according mm -hmm. to what they look like today and think that it wouldn't be obvious that they were slaves. Mm -hmm. They would look like the African people. They had to look like them. They had to sound like them. They had to, everything about them. And, and we, we, still, we still forget yeah. the African people that was bought over here were from tribes. Ah, that's right. Right? They that's were still right. rocking, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the deer hides and the skins. Mm -hmm. And they was, these were things that was customary to them. You know what I mean? No clothes. And, mm -hmm. So, again, I'm, I'm trying to go back to make sure I answer your question fully. We cannot truly and honestly say how many of us exist that are Native Americans. Mm -hmm. What we can do is take the historical information that we have and use that to our advantage. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I talked about on our Instagram channel recently mm -hmm. was the fact that they documented there was more Native American exported mm -hmm. to the West Indies yep. than there was Africans mm -hmm. imported mm -hmm. into America. Mm -hmm. And the number they gave at that point in time, which was the 1600s to early 1707, 1680 to 1707, was 31 or 30,000 to 51,000. Wow. They didn't say year. Mm -hmm. They didn't say month. They just said 30 to 50,000 or 51,000 mm -hmm. Native Americans was exported to the West Indies. Mm -hmm. I had to look at are they talking about from 1680 to 1707 mm. or 1715? Because that's when it stopped. Mm. Or were they saying per year, per month, mm. per day? Mm. Wow. We don't know how many of us still exist that, I, that openly and can historically claim their Native American heritage. Mm. Thank you for that long drawn out question and give me that opportunity to share. Hey, that's what you're here for. Thank you. I love that. The pen is mightier than the sword. The pen is right? mightier than the sword. Paper genocide. Paper that genocide. That was a real thing. How did Europeans write us out from being native to this land to then being blacks and coloreds and all of those things? So I'll simplify it in this selfish way. Mm -hmm. If you don't read my language, you don't understand my way of thinking and you are supportive of me you excuse me you need me to mm. teach you of my ways mm. and whatever i tell you is facts that's true right yeah. so that that paper genocide happened real simplistically because as as they put us in slavery they was also raising children mm. 
and they was educating these children. Mm. And it goes back just simply to, what's your name? Mm. Caleb. Caleb. No, your name is Toby. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right. What's your name? I'll say, now I have to say Toby. I'll be forced to. Yeah. Why? And, and it's not something you would just easily get. And the education system is the same way. Mm. The paper genocide runs deep. Because think about this. Today, we can go to native events called powwows. Yeah. Right. And this is this is a, a situation mm -hmm. that never there is not a universal word. There was never a word called powwow amongst Native American people. Wow. I've never found that word in any native language from my understanding. I could be correct. I could be corrected. Mm -hmm. I don't mind being wrong. Mm. But powwow, which I'm pretty sure has a relationship. Every, every word has a root. Right. Mm. But this is not something universally spoken amongst Native American people because we don't have a word for powwow or we don't say powwow in Hichiti. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. The Creek language doesn't have powwow. Mm. Okay. But the point that I'm making is that so much of who we are is taught to us and accepted. Mm. But when you go to these powwows, which is where I was going with this, you will see our pale skin brothers. And we have to call them that because I believe there's a creator. Mm -hmm. We say father, mother, the great mystery. For sure. But we have our pale skinned brothers there that will identify as Cherokee, Seminole, Creek, right? They, they, a lot of them rep represent us in reenactments, mm -hmm. things of that nature. And they will say, I am a Muskukali, mm -hmm. a Muskogee, yeah. or Chiroquai, mm -hmm. or Cherokee. or mm Cherokee. -hmm. No one questions that. They're not pretendians. The only time they become pretendians when there's nothing but white people there. Mm. But they're not pretendians and that's accepted because when you go to the Cherokee Nation, they're predominantly and look like white people. Yeah. This is the narrative that also I talk about on our Instagram channel, mm -hmm. right? The fact that there is federal information, federal documents that says there was a unique identity and look to the Creek Nation. Mm. Then they specifically talk about the white brothers and sisters who look predominantly like white men. Okay? The paper genocide happened when we start watching the movies. Mm. Yeah. When we start believing. Remember uh, Dancing with Wolves? Mm -hmm. we can, I can name a ton of Indian movies. Yeah. Right? Leonardo DiCaprio just did one recently. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um, I think uh, Iron Cody... Uh, I just found out he was like Italian or something like yes. that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. The, the, and people who don't know who Iron Cody is, Iron Cody is the the crying Indian, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, I, I, and he was he he had the the hooked nose and he was. That's crazy. Wow. Listen, it's, it's, it's facts. Wow. The the thing that we have to do now is understand that they never expected us to read, so they documented everything. The best thing about Google is they digitize everything now, mm -hmm. so everything that you need to know. Is now documented, and all you have to do is ask the right questions. Ask the right questions. Hmm. You ask you ask an AI right now something, it will give you an answer, but it may not give you the answer you want. You ask the right questions, it mm. will give you the response, and it will give you what you want. Hmm. That is the Google search system. Hmm. So when we start asking these questions, Creek, Negroes, Black Indians, these different things, we're going to get the appropriate answer. Hmm. The thing that I say to us and our people is, the paper genocide starts with you believing what you was told. So mm. first, omit black. Mm. Omit the black part. Mm -hmm. When you omit that part, because the black will be synonymous to Africans. Mm. And it will be a part of the whole African-Americans mixed with the Indians. And this is what you're getting, blah, 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 blah. There you go. But one of the things that I've done inside of our Instagram and, and, and everything, mm. every chance I get, is I will search and show images of Seminole women, Creek women, and it will say Seminole squaw. Mm. And I'll stop and I'll say, let's pay attention now. Mm. Yes, she looks like your auntie. Yes, she's wearing the bangs with the mm. bun in the 18, 1700s. Mm -hmm. But what, what does it say? It does not say black Seminole. Mm. It does not say African Seminole. So when we start taking that part out and we start deep diving and looking and going back to the ancient Americas and we start saying who was the first people that they saw, where are the depictions? When we start asking specifically, where is the information that goes against what history has been showing us? Mm. 
we'll find the answers that we want. Mm -hmm. So the paper genocide starts with our understanding and accepting the knowledge, what we've been taught. And it's so deeply rooted because our own people, people of color, will believe that narrative and will defend it. Mm -hmm. And they don't hear the Uncle Tom. They don't mm -hmm. hear the the um, slave mentality yeah. that was embedded in them when they when they say that. Mm -hmm. They'll defend the narrative that was given to them by their white oppressors, which is always topical, meaning that it is always something more recent than it is ancient. Mm -hmm. The real narratives lie before the more recent narratives, before Jim Crow, mm -hmm. before Plecker, mm -hmm. before you know eugenics. Mm -hmm. Those are the answers you want to find the narratives mm -hmm. that deep dive into the historical aspect of what did they see when they get they got here 1500s. That's right. This is the these are the things we're supposed to deep dive. Stop taking the topical information, the first thing that comes up on Google, mm -hmm. and then utilizing that as your source of information. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that when it comes to the Yamasi, because everything we got right now is right now. Let <laughs> Let topical, know. but um, you know, so my, my point being that we have to look at this and, and it's and it's so it's so scary because it's so complicated but simplistic. Mm -hmm. It's complicated because it it, it forces people to think. Mm -hmm. If they think, then they'll say, "This doesn't make sense," and I got to deep dive, right? That's the, mm -hmm. that's the that's the hardcore shit. Mm -hmm. But when it gets simplistic, you're like, "Oh my god, mm -hmm. I see why. I see what it is. Mm -hmm. I see what it is." Mm -hmm. I had a conversation with a West Indies brother. Um, simply, uh, matter of fact, if you go on my Instagram channel, you'll see him talk about the West Indies are supporting us, Australia supporting yep, us. And yeah, that was that. so monumental to yeah, me. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and it was emotional. And we had a conversation afterwards, and I said it on a live later on. And I said to him, so we can prove that Native American people were sent to the West Indies, right? That's mm -hmm. a fact. He said, yes, that's documented. <laughs> no one can dispute that there was Native American people sent to West, West Indies. Mm. So I said to him, where are they at? Where are the people who look like the Indian people here in America? Where are they at in the West Indies? Mm. Where's this group of people who look like the quote Seminole people today, mm -hmm. the Creek people today, mm -hmm. the Cherokee people today? It's a good question. Yeah. The, 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 the Lakota. Mm. Because see, I'm attacking them now because mm. now it becomes a problem like, mm. oh, you know, you're, no, no, stop. If they sent millions of Indians over to the West Indies, mm -hmm. 1680, 1750, let's just simplify it and say they just sent 51,000. How are you going to send 51,000 people to Jamaica, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Antilles, mm -hmm. um, Antigua, mm -hmm. name all of the, 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 the countries and islands yep. that make up the West Indies? Mm -hmm. It wasn't 51,000. Wow. Again, they said they sent more Indians over to the West Indies, then they bought African people here. So there have to be a way more Indians mm -hmm. over in, in the West Indies than mm -hmm. there is people in America. Wow. Where are they at if they look like the people we see today? Mm -hmm. Just common sense questions. Mm -hmm. This is what they're scared of, yeah. the common sense questions. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to tie it into you. When you go into my Instagram page, because everything that I provide is always a link in historical narrative. Yes, sir. And you look at the Bureau of Indian Affairs, mm -hmm. these people, the Department of the Interior, who federally recognize people. They take the historical narrative and their historical proof that they're tied to a historical people. Mm -hmm. And they take that information and say, how are you, you connected to them? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're federally recognized. And so they become a federally chartered organization. Mm -hmm. And you look at the documentation they have, it says to you, oh, the Creek Nation did very well mm. as a Negro nation. Mm. Oh, stop, back up. <laughs> Hold on. The Creek Nation was a Negro nation? Mm. And they talk about a Creek Negro Indian who was controlling it in the late 1800s. Wow. See, all this ties back into the Indians that were sent to West Indies. Mm. See, you, you, a lot of times people hear what I'm saying and they get caught up in what I'm saying at that particular time, but they never tie it all in. I'm trying to like, hey, let me lay this out here, mm -hmm. and then y'all can figure out this part. Piece by piece. Piece by piece, yeah. right? Because that's the part of the puzzle. But when we look at this, this part of it, now the question becomes, if the Creek people, and I can delve deep in that, you know what I mean? I hate doing par paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. 
I love quoting. But if we dive deep and we go into what it identified the Creek Nation as, there was not a Creek Indian that was not identified as a Negro. So I'll say real simple, where's the Negroes at? Hmm. Oh, they're the freedmen now. Yep. They're the freedmen begging to be identified hmm. by those who was once not even considered Creek. That's documented. That's documented. That there was a different, there was a different class of Creeks. The Creeks who were Creeks all looked like Negroes or considered Negroes to be Creeks. Mm. And then there was the mulattoes. Mm -hmm. There was the mixed breeds. And there was those who looked even white. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to leave this show without literally quoting that statement mm. because that is more powerful than anything else when it comes to our identity. Mm -hmm. And me saying to people, stop looking for acceptance. That's right. But the only way I can do that, if I take that away from you, I have to provide you with something. And I'm providing them with the historical narratives and facts. Mm -hmm. And this ain't me. Don't get mad. Don't want to kill me. Just mm -hmm. understand we all have the ability to research and read. Mm -hmm. This is not me wanting to disrupt a, a system or society. This is me saying that we have been separated and taken away from our identity so much so that people who are claiming to be African-American don't even feel that connection. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is African about you? What do you mm. do that's African? Mm. Let's do one better. Let's simplify all that. Let's simplify all of it. You're saying we all came together if you accept being African-American. I came on the ship that you came on. Mm. Yet for some reason, Mr. British, Mr. German, Mr. Spaniard, the applications and surveys don't say British-American. Mm -hmm. The job applications don't say German American. You're all foreigners. If I'm a foreigner, why is it that you uniquely want to say African American? I'm trying to specify it. Yeah. Why? What are you keeping us from? See, no one's questioning this. We just accept it blindly. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, what do you do that's African? So throughout the years and, and, and over this last century, oh, Kwanzaa, June 10th. Mm -hmm. Gullah Geechee, mm -hmm. a, a word and term that wasn't even used until the 1980s. That's what I was going to ask you about. Yep. Right? Yeah. And pushing the narrative. Why? Yeah. And, and the same people, the Gullah people that I talked to, oh, my grandmother was full blooded Indian. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back, back up. And mm -hmm. Indian tribes is matrilineal. Mm -hmm. It's a matrilineal society. So if your grandmother is, you are. It's through the mother. Yep. It's through your mother. You got a grandmother, that means you got a mother. Mm -hmm. What was she? Mm. It, it, it just, it gets, it gets real. Listen, I'm here to start problems. I'm going to be in trouble hey. for this one too. We're going to be part of this <laughs> problem tonight. We're going to be part it's of this problem. It's going to be a problem. Let's do it. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Common sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, you would watch football growing up, of course, Washington Redskins. And until I got older, I would realize, yo, his skin is just as dark as mine on that logo. Florida State Seminoles. Same thing. The Olmec statues found in Mexico, they had wide noses. Right. Black features. Why is it so hard for black people here in America to accept that these people look just like you? And there's so much evidence out there that it's right in your face, whether it was the Cleveland Indians, uh, Boston Braves at the time, they'll have a young black child go out there with feathers on everything. But now, like, we can't even fathom that we can be indigenous to the same land because of what you just started out the conversation with mm. why is it so hard to believe or for black people to believe because mm. that's what we do we, we start out with black. that black yep right that's the terminology right yeah so you know what i like to say is real simple caleb mm -hmm. i owe you a thousand dollars i owe you a thousand dollars next month caleb i know i ain't paid you mm. i'm gonna make sure i get that eight hundred dollars to you <laughs> it's gonna start getting lower and lower right yeah this is black. Mm. When they said red man, matter of fact, I'll do one better for African American people. Mm. Light skinned women was called what? Red bone. Oh, let's stop. Copper colored people. Yeah, they put a call what? Their hand. Yeah. Light skin. Yeah. Red. Mm. Right? Right. That's the truth of it. Mm. Even when it comes to the word Indian, the root word, I, I hear these brothers who are historically astute. Mm and self-taught and they say oh the word indian comes from indigenous mm. wrong mm. came from indigo mm -hmm. what is indigo mm. 
Mm. See, when you start getting to the root of a thing, the indigo is what they saw in the color of the people. So now when I look at my my lighter skinned brothers and sisters, because that's what I call them, mm -hmm. you don't look indigo to me. Mm -hmm. You don't look red to me. Your hair isn't wavy, isn't copper tone. It's mm -hmm. the same thing they did to Jesus. Yahshua HaMashiach, Emmanuel, whatever you want to name him, right? Yeah. The Bible, that they put him right in front of everybody. They describe him completely. They got a whole different picture. Oh, my God. What they, what, what they say? Uh, Bronze. Yes. Burnt. In a furnace. Okay. Hair like wool. Okay. But yeah. we got images in black churches all around the world of what? It's a hippie. White man, blue eyes. Yeah. Opposite to what we're being taught. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not trying to step on people's toes, but I'm talking about let's take information and read it the way it is. Mm. This is why the book is translated. The word translate means to change. Mm. When you read something in its original language, when you go back to the root of it, Negro, black, mm. anyone who's Spanish knows, morenos, yep. all means what? Black. Black. Yeah. But then we say, my shirt's black. My shirt's black, yes. My skin is. Well, how would red. you define me? It's red. Yeah. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Go back to I owe you a thousand dollars, but it's eight hundred dollars next month. Mm. This is the part of what I'm saying to those of us. Every Native American tribe I've met, every federal petition I've met, all use Jim Crow and and the Plecker Law mm. and eugenics and all the different things to argue their federal petitions. Mm. They have to identify as Negroes to be recognized as a Indian tribe. Mm. Think That's about deep. that. That's deep. Southeast Indians wow. that apply has mm. to prove they have Negro in them to be recognized. Mm. Don't believe me. Look it up. Check it out. My argument has always been to them. Why is the Yamasi a problem? I could tell you why the Yamasi is a problem. Because we're the only tribe that looked like we were identified. Mm. How, how do I fake being a Negro? Mm. They'd be like, oh, y'all pretendians. How do you fake being a Negro? This is a description of my people. How do I pretend to be something that I, quote, look like? Mm. But you're descendants of us. Let's do one better. They say Seminole, Seminole, Semaroon, Maroon. Mm -hmm. So I hear my Maroon brothers say, oh, we're Maroons. Yep. To them, that equates to African. No, it doesn't. Mm. Semaroon, runaways, wild ones. Mm. The runaways. And you'll hear similar people say, no, that's not true. Well, I got links in our IG that says, yes. They don't want for that to come out. They don't want that to come out. Yeah. Because, see, they don't know. They're still following the same oppressors that they say oppress them. Mm. They're following their information. Most of the websites and information you get on, in Native American tribes that they say is oral tradition isn't oral tradition. It is a regurgitation mm. of what the Europeans said. It's written tradition. <laughs> yeah. Right? But when we look at the word Seminole, Run away. Mm. You're going to tell me the, those you see as Seminoles today look like they look like Negroes on a slave plantation. That, that the, the colonists couldn't mistake in them. Those, mm. those my Negroes. Mm. You, you're going to tell me that the slave narratives inside of the court documentation, the judicial system that they have within the Lord proprietors and all of the documentation that they have, which identified these as people as Negro that came off a ship because that's what they did. Mm. They falsified paperwork. Mm -hmm. Um, what do they call them? What is the terminology? I'm looking. I just, I just had to come up with this the other day. Um, the not the memoir, the manifesto. manifesto. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Aaron, hey, he on it with the document. I appreciate so, you. Hey, that's gonna be 100%. you got it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, in the manifesto, it says from Africa, blah 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 blah. Mm. Right. I say, so how do you, as this light skinned brother? Say that I look like my original people, I'm full-blooded, and you don't look like none of what they described your people as. Mm. Hmm. But I can show you where the Creek people all identified as Negroes. Mm. Matter of fact, I can even show you where books say the invention of the Creek Nation, which wow. people hate when I do that. Wow. When I sat before Stephen Hahn and we had the 300th <laughs> year anniversary but for the Yamasi uh, War, and the question was asked... Uh, it sounds like you're saying, what was the difference between a creek and a Yamasi? And the man paused, and you could see him breathe like, I got to really answer this. Mm. He said, there was none. Why? Because the Yamasi were identified as Negro. Mm. 
The word creek was invented for the purpose of treaties. They could not beat the Yamasi. And this is truth, and, and this is something people can look up. From the Yamasi War of 1715, which is when the West Indian slave trade just coincidentally stopped. Wow. To the Seminole War and Third and Second Seminole War. Let's go back. What is a Seminole? A runaway. A Semaroon. Seminole. Runaways from the slave plantations. I mean, mm. are, we putting it, are we putting it together? Mm. Are we putting it together? It's why movie productions and documentaries are coming now and coming to us and coming to me and saying, hey, right. we, we, we need you in this because they need to be factually correct in their documentation. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a problem to people who say, he don't look like us. That's right. He don't look like us. He's pretending. I can, I can talk this way. I can, I can do this. I speak the language. I can sit here and put on, you know, a little Ebonics and, and sound like a, a, a native in person. I can walk in the hood mm. and I can sound hood. We got white people that walk in the hood. You can't tell them from a black person. You just close your eyes and listen to mm -hmm. him. He sound like, mm. right? Does that make him who he is? No. Mm. So yes, we can play the game if we mm. wanted to. We have Yamasi people that look like modern day Indians, mm. but they will tell you that I look this way because my ancestors was raped. Mm. That is the true acceptance. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is the truth amongst people today. Two years, three years ago, before COVID, we had a we had the end of the world as we knew it. When everyone of color said enough is enough against people of color. Mm -hmm. Enough is enough. George Floyd changed the whole dynamics of the world. That was major, yeah. You hear me? Yeah. Different countries, mm -hmm. native people, no one said anything derogatory against a person of color at that point. We're all team tired. Mm. COVID came in, separate, y'all, good. Mm. Y'all stay away from each other. Mm. And then everybody went right back to their typical racist way of thinking and, th and ideology. It took that much for people to start forgetting what we first united for, what we got tired of, mm -hmm. wow. and went back to the normal. Mm -hmm. So now you have people like myself and my people and my tribe and people who are searching for themselves who now have to say that equality that you want now, Mr. Native Indian, is what we fought for and gave our lives for, mm -hmm. for you. Because that's one thing they can never take about or take away from the Yamasi, that we fought for no matter what color, no matter what ethnicity. Yes, we put people in slavery, but our slavery was different compared to theirs. Mm -hmm. But we fought for them. We was the first Coast Guard. Wow. See, that is a part of black history people don't even know. Wow. We was the first Coast Guard for the North Atlantic region, the seaboard. Say black people are afraid of water though, right? Oh, we, yeah, we black, we afraid of water. Yeah. But as creeks, we traveled up and down the water. Mm -hmm. Think about that one. Wow. We did that. Mm. So again, yeah, and, and that's why I was telling you before we started the interview, I have so much in my head and so much information that I have that mm -hmm. I try to express and not, not in ways that I'm dictating to people, but in ways that entices you to think Mm -hmm. and research for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't take what Chief Sekou is saying. Mm -hmm. Go and research it for yourself. Yes, and sir. if you still doubt that, go to our Instagram page and I try my best to provide mm -hmm. as many links and information as I can so that you are guided. But stop taking the narrative and stop being embarrassed to be who you are. That's right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have Creek brothers and sisters that look white. I have Creek brothers and sisters who look modern day Indians. Mm -hmm. And I have Creek brothers and sisters who look like us. And I... Identified me as chief, mm. who thank me every day mm. for sharing this message because they know they cannot change the historical narrative. Mm. And they need me to be able to explain for them why they're Creek, mm. why they're Yamasi, what happened. Mm. And those are the people we honor more than anything. Those who accept and say, yeah, yeah, mm. that's a fact. Yeah, I look white, but my blood has Negro in it. Mm -hmm. So... I apologize again. Hey, <laughs> we cooking up. I love this. Yamasi people, strong people, of course, um, fighting all of that. Andrew Jackson, what impact did he have on the men of the tribe having to hide, change their names, all of that? Most of the colonists, superheroes, right, are on their the money. Dang, that's true. I like to say they That's banked true. on them. Let's let's do that. They they banked on them. Literally. Literally. 
mm. right? So when you look at Andrew Jackson, who has a whole Yamasi region, Tamukwa, Wale region, Jacksonville, mm. named after him, mm -hmm. right? No one's saying let's change Jacksonville, but you're talking about one of the most racist men there was. What he did was what most typical white people did. What, what people don't realize in, in the, the, the colonial society was it was customary. We, we watch their, their videos and we watch their history, like the Game of Thrones and all mm -hmm. different things, right? And you see men on men and things like that. That's fine. Right. But this is what they did to men. Hmm. They would take a man's manhood. Buck breaking. Yeah, things like 100%. that. 100%. Yeah. But they went deeper than that. Mm. They would take the, the, the innocence of a child. Wow. This is who Andrew Jackson was. Hmm. The same society that we have today that if you went and slept with a little 13-year-old girl, you'd be in jail. They did. Thomas Jefferson did that. Yeah. Come on. Yep. The history of these people are something that we don't have to question. We know mm. time and time again. Mm. The only thing we have to say, which is why we're looking at, as we learn history, they're trying to change the narrative of history. So we don't want you to tell the story Mm. Of these people who made you as white people mm. rich because you didn't have to do their work. Let's not tell that slave trade. I don't want to say no particular governor's name. Let's mm. not tell that story mm. because I don't want my children to feel guilty over something their ancestors did. Mm. But then you would turn around at the same time and acknowledge, memorialize mm. African-American history, mm. which means you accept that you were slaves. Mm. You accept that you did and were this to my people. But don't teach that ish to my children in school to make them feel bad about themselves. Because mm. white children now are waking up and saying, I come from this type of society mm. where now I have to recognize people's rights and how they want to identify and who they are. Yeah. But let's hide what my people did. So you're making the ultimate hypocrites. Mm. You want them to be the ultimate hypocrites. As long as we're together as two men, I should accept that. As long as we're together as two women, I can accept that. But what we did to black people or African Americans, let's let's push that to the back. Mm. Think about that. This is what Andrew Jackson and the rest of these people did. Mm. This is the society they created. And as we move forward in a country who bolsters, we're the most free mm. country in the world. Land of the free. We're the most rich hmm. country in the world. Yeah. We will suppress the history of the people and what we did to them because we don't want that thrown in our face. Mm -hmm. And it's what I tell people about the whole aspect of the historical Band-Aid. We keep putting a Band-Aid on something. It will never heal until we address what has happened mm -hmm. to the suppressed people that we did it to. Mm -hmm. You're going to other countries today and think about America as a society. We're going to other countries to give them freedom as slaves, mm. but we hide the history of what we did to our slaves. Mm. That makes sense to everybody. Democracy. Oh, democracy. Democracy. Mm. And the hypocrites that we are, we accept that. We went over there and saved them people. They're free now. Their women have rights. <laughs> and we ain't got rights. We don't have rights. An Asian person come over here, a Japanese person come over here and get any kind of racial discrimination or murder or killed. Mm -hmm. There's money thrown in that community for that issue. Right. And when one of us get killed, it's, well, what did he do to do it? Mm. Like we don't walk into stores and we're not talked down to by Asian people who look mm -hmm. at it a certain way because America teaches... And this is documented. Go look mm -hmm. it on TikTok. Go y'all look it up because now that's mm -hmm. what digital side. Yep. They, foreigners tell you that when we come over here, we're taught how bad black people are. Like that, man. That's scary that you said that. Come on, yeah, man. I just saw that on TikTok. Come on. Yep. We're taught how bad you are. So now they come here opening up businesses that you can't open. Mm. No money, no credit. Mm. And they'll talk down to you, but take your money and sell you your own and hair sell products. you your own hair products. Wow. We don't understand how messed up this is. Again, let me shut up because I'm causing problems. Hey, we're gonna I'm keep trying to be here till I'm 90 or 120. Hey, we're going to make sure that. <laughs> you're going to be good. Hey, you already protected. That's what's up, family. You already protected. But that's powerful. Yamasi tribe as well had a lower and upper chieftain. Yes. How massive was this tribe? Our tribe, the Yamasi tribe, had the 
the largest, mm. the largest chiefdom. Matter of fact, before you can look this up, before there was a, ever a Cherokee upper and lower region, there was the Yamasi upper and lower region. Mm. Right now, we've calculated there was well over 400 towns and villages that spanned from the top of North Carolina, because people fail to realize mm. there was, and see, they, they try to do is, oh, they're from South Carolina, and, and no, there was no South Carolina, it was the Carolinas originally. Mm -hmm. That is right. True. Yep. And then it expanded over to Alabama and Louisiana, mm. all the way down to Florida. Wow. Right? So we went from almost the Midwest all the way over to the Southeast. Why is it no one's questioning? Why, why don't why don't the Native American people in the Southeast, the Lumdi, name them? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? The Catawba, yeah. any of these tribes, Seminole people, why they don't look like the Lakota, the Apache? On the, the West Coast. Yes. Got you. Right? Mm -hmm. That confederacy. We had a unique identity. The Yamasi had one of the largest confederacies there is. And people don't understand that. Why was the Yamasi War so detrimental? Why was it considered the bloodiest war? See, they'll stop and say, when we went, we started out with 19,000 of us. So you mean to tell me 19,000 Yamasi and people will say, oh, it wasn't just 19,000 Yamasi. It was a conglomeration of different tribes that helped the Yamasi. No, that's not what Ogathorpe and Craven said. They mm. said, all these are Yamasi. That's documented. Mm. But 19,000 people, I bring all my brothers and warriors, all you all who's watching this, and I say, we're going to go to war. You're just twiddling your thumbs at 19,000. We only killed 400 white people, though, in Charleston. So it took 19,000 people to kill 400 people. No. It wasn't considered the bloodiest war because of their numbers. What they could not do is never look like they were the victims. That's right. Which is why our name was also written out of history, mm -hmm. which is why we, there was no longer Yamasi. We became known as Creek. We're mm -hmm. no longer Creek. We became known as Seminoles. You see? Mm -hmm. Again, back to it. It's always going back, go, it's always gonna go back to the paper genocide. Wow. Because they knew at this point at some point, people are going to read and they're going to see these Negro Indians hmm. that wrecked havoc. Hmm. And then you'll go back to the Seminole history and you'll pull up these Indians who are not identified as African or black Seminoles. And they are looking dynamically black. Hmm. And you'll say the Yamasi were identified as Negroes in the late 18, 1900s. They still had Seminoles hmm. who looked like Negroes. And these are the same Negroes that was fighting. It changes the dynamics and the way of thinking that we are a warrior society that was peaceful. Mm -hmm. But we looked a certain type of way. That confederacy spanned it. And you will see it within the realm of the ancient text and identity amongst the Catawba, who people says, the Yamasi are my ancient people. The Cherokee who has several chiefs that when it came time to go to war, they said, those are my ancient people. Mm. What do they mean by ancient people? Mm. You, have, you have ancient people in your bloodline. That's why you're here, right? Yes, sir. You got to look like them. Because mm. I came from them. Because I came from them. Mm. So, you know, my point is that it, it, it goes way deeper than most people think. And I'm really trying to give enough information that allows them to take contextual portions of what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And if they don't get nothing else, oh, that, that hits home. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's something I remember him saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, wow, let me look that up. Mm -hmm. I try to give enough information that we can take little bits and pieces, pieces. And I hope mm -hmm. that everyone, you know, comes back and eventually play this podcast back mm -hmm. and don't just listen to it, watch it, yeah. take notes, For sure. come back, watch mm -hmm. it. Damn it, if it takes you making this podcast <laughs> a million views, do that <laughs> so because be. there's so much that I'm sharing mm -hmm. that you can research for yourself mm. that will give you information. Mm. The biggest dishonor we can give to our ancestors is forgetting them. Mm. Think about the way they lived back then. Mm -hmm. Your grandmama, great grandmamas. Mm -hmm. Your great grandmother may have been born in the 1940s or 50s. Mm -hmm. Your great grandmother, mm -hmm. right? Your grandmother might have been born in the 1970s because of your age. Yeah. But your great great grandmother was born in 1900s, and in the 1900s they were still hanging black people. Yeah, actually, uh, my great grandmother she was born in 1916. So there yeah. you go. And she would have those stories about lynchings and all of that. And lynchings and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So we walk today amongst ourselves, where our biggest adversary is ourselves. 
Mm. We're more worried about ourselves than mm. we are worried about them because mm. they have now allowed us to kill ourselves. But there was a point in time in your bloodline where walking past a white person or looking them in their eyes or even having a conversation with them mm. could get you killed. Mm -hmm. Now, take out electricity, take out cars, mm. take out internet, mm. take out mobile phones, take out gas, propane, take mm. out all the conveniences that we have mm. that our ancestors had to survive in without. Mm. And then tell me they don't deserve acknowledgement? Mm. That it's not your duty to find out who you are? Mm. It's not your duty to honor your answers because if you exist today, that means somebody existed then and that their struggle was not your struggle that you're crying and bitching about? Mm. That every time our women had children, they didn't have doctors. Mm -hmm. They didn't have people that, oh, it's going to be okay and pop them in their back with an epidural and stuff like that. No. Mm -hmm. They had to have babies in the middle of wars. Mm -hmm. They had to have babies in, in lakes and creeks where alligators and where mm -hmm. blood attracted these animals. Mm -hmm. They had to have babies during times where they was in transit for freedom. Mm -hmm. And you mean to tell me they're not worthy of you honoring them and researching them? Mm -hmm. How dare you? Mm -hmm. How dare you? Mm -hmm. While you live comfortably in your designer clothes and your lives. Yeah. How dare you? Mm -hmm. The greatest honor you can give your ancestors to say, I remember you, grandmother. I appreciate what you did. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You may not know the whole story, just knowing a piece of that story, mm -hmm. knowing that the time she lived in, because again, we are not here. We keep forgetting this. Mm -hmm. We are not here if we did not have an ancestor who lived in the days and times that we read about. Mm -hmm. That is what it is to be native. That is what it is to be an Indian. Mm -hmm. Ceremony for us isn't running around Dancing and yelling, hey, hey, and all this. No, 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 no. It's remembering our ancestors and what they did to survive. It's taking ourselves out the elements, mm. taking ourselves away from cell phones, modern stuff, getting out there in the circle, understanding their dynamics, understanding what they was doing it for, what they was praying for, what they was hoping to invoke. Mm -hmm. And honoring them. Mm. Amongst our people, we have green corn. It's our new year. Mm. Our new year is us honoring the first corn, the first ripening of fruits and vegetables. Mm. Us asking the creator, us paying homage to the creator mm. that he bestows upon us a fruitful year, no war, no death. Mm. Being able to hunt, the deer being plentiful, the beavers being plentiful, mm. fish being plentiful. Mm -hmm. Right? Invoking animal spirits that made us better hunter-gatherers. Mm. Wow. See, we don't understand what it is. And see, they've made it so mystic and, mm. oh, you're dishonoring my people and why are you... Get out of here. We understand the dynamics of what was really going on. Mm. So th when we go into ceremony, we're honoring our ancestors. And so much of what your ancestors are is passed on through African-American society. They don't even realize it. Mm. New Year. What do you do in the New Year, guys? Collard greens. Oh, yeah. you clean your house. Yeah. Make sure everything clean, yeah. right? Black eyed peas. Black eyed peas. You put on. Mm. Okay. I can tell you 100. You come to Green Corn, it's the same thing we do. We just don't do it in the Gregorian year. Mm. That's his New Year. Yeah. We're doing practices out of sync when, when we were doing it. Mm. It's the same thing Native people do. That is Green Corn. Mm. You introduce new babies, family members. Mm -hmm. Everybody meet who? Big Mama. Mm because we're a matrilineal society. She runs the tribe, hmm. right? That's not a coincidence. There's no coincidences. You clean your house, make sure your house is clean because they say if you come into the new year- Yep, bad spirits, bad Okay. <laughs> Too many correlations. That's a tribal thing. Mm. We're just dancing with other people during the time of year they say it exists. Mm. During their time of doing it. Mm. Again, I'm here up. to cause problems. Hey, we're going to keep causing those problems. <laughs> y'all, make sure, man, y'all are taking notes. Big Mama, right? We have movies like Soul Food. Growing up, 
uh, my family till this day, I think we're on our 63rd uh, consecutive year of family reunions every single time. But hearing your story, previous interviews, sit downs, talking about powwows two to three times a year, black families still have those, right? So how can we correlate and like understand, hey, we still have those same traditions, ideologies. It's just we were told something different. We just did. Mm. The, the thing that it's not even correlating no more. We are now individualizing our lives to the point where me, 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 I, I, me, I don't have time. Me, yeah, right. Separate. And so we're looking now for acceptance from people who are not even related to us. Hmm. See, the ceremony is now stopping. The family, the tribal unit is separating. We used to sit back, and I, and this is within my time frame. I'm not that old, you know what I mean? I'm only 35, <laughs> sort of, kind of, which is a lie, everybody. I'm not 35. <laughs> but I grew up in a time where, of course, traditionally, as Yamasi, we did it. Mm -hmm. But we also watch other people come together every Sunday and have what? Mm, Sunday dinner. Mm. Yeah. When last time you've been to a family Sunday dinner? Every Sunday of the month. Yeah. Long time. Most yeah. of us don't even do family reunions no more. We see each other once on Facebook. Year. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sunday dinner, I know for me personally, it's probably like once a month max. Wow. So we're, we're, we're getting away from our traditions. And this is, this is a plight mm -hmm. amongst all Native people. Mm -hmm. the, the argument now with Native people is they're losing their, their youth. Mm -hmm. They're losing their customs and tradition. Mm -hmm. See, U.S. government has this plotted, and I can't make this up. Look it up again. Mm -hmm. They're saying in another 20, 30 years, there won't be a full-blooded Indian or no, no one that could be considered Indian anymore. Wow. Because what Native tribes say, which is what, what I want people of color to understand, you may be able to prove that you are tied to a historic tribe. You may be able to prove through Dawes Rose, Freeman Rose, or whatever Rose, Miller Rose, whatever they're using, mm -hmm. that you are connected to Cherokee, Seminole, Creek. You know what their, their thing is? Okay. Oh, well, if you don't practice your traditions, you know, you're not Indian no more. Mm -hmm. You might well say you're black or you're white. So it's not about the bloodline anymore. And that's important to us. We need to understand that. Get back into your family traditions. Start honoring and recognizing your ancestors. Start having the family dinners. Start reconnecting as a unit. Mm -hmm. Because we're all going to get older. I don't give a damn how well you look now. It's nature. Yeah. You're going to get older. Yeah. And your values and what you believe in now. Mm -hmm. And this video probably will be another 100 mm -hmm. years. Hopefully someone's mm -hmm. playing this back. Everything you believe in now mm. will not apply when you become 40, 50, 50, 60 years old if you live that far. Mm. You're going to want the acceptance. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to be recognized for you being able to continue on when your friends and family members were dying mm. through improper health, through going out and gangbanging, mm -hmm. through you know car accidents. Mm -hmm. you, you want that acknowledgement to be called grandmama, grandpa, papa, mama, nana, whatever. You only can live on if you're acknowledged for your accomplishments because the world isn't getting easier, it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. The world that we live in today, at my age, I would have never foresaw happening. Mm -hmm. What makes this message powerful that, that I have and why we're picking up so many people and, and someone recently said, why are, we, why are we trending? Because my trend is family unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if I die tomorrow, people are catching on that it's about unity. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're white, black, Hispanic, Latino. We have all of those dynamics within the Yamasi people. Mm -hmm. But the question that I'm saying to everyone now is, get past that BS. Mm -hmm. They're telling us now there's aliens. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So what happens when there's an alien invasion? Mm. You think your color's going to matter? Nah, it's going to be human. It's going to be human. Yeah. You ain't gonna see color? Yeah, hey, brother. You're gonna see a white man's calling you, brother, Indian brother calling you. Know, He's he, gonna need some help. Yeah. We, we all need help, damn it. Because yeah. <laughs> they are technologically more advanced than us. That's right. That's right. Right? Mm. So let's get there now. Mm. Let's start that journey now. Mm. Let's honor our ancestors now. Mm. Let's pay homage to our ancestors now. Mm. This is the native way. This mm. is the way of thinking. This mm -hmm. is the way of being in tune with mm. the world today. Regardless to whatever I say, no matter how you, you take whatever I said and internalize it and you say, damn, these people did this, this, this to our people and you want to make this a racial thing. No, stop all that. What I'm saying to you is take the history, mm -hmm. learn, mm -hmm. understand it, identify yourself, stop looking for approval, mm -hmm. but then let's Voltron up. Mm -hmm. let's, let's unify. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, we're more powerful doing this mm -hmm. than we are doing this. That's right. We do this. We can have whatever we want. Mm. And this is not a American thing. I'm talking about the world. Mm. 
when we can do this, mm. when we can do this, this, and it's to be unseparable. Mm. When our women can start acknowledging the hardships of our men, the warriors, the ones that we sent out to battles. When we start acknowledging, see, that's a tribal thing. The matriarchs, the women. Mm -hmm. Men will give their lives. You don't have to have one baby from the, your girlfriend or your mate. Mm -hmm. But you, when that, baby, what's that? I don't know. Go check. You're going to go check. Yeah. You're going up to give your life up. Mm -hmm. That's what an Indian would do. That's a warrior. Wow. No gun. If I let's let's straight knuckle up, yeah, straight, straight knuckle, that's, right? That's it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, what you're doing, you're giving her a chance to do what? Run away if she needs to. Yep. So our women have to start doing the right thing by our brothers. Mm. When you have a real man that's mm. willing to give his life for you, your children, mm -hmm. your existence, mm -hmm. love him, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Brothers, when you have a real woman that has your back, or women that have your back, acknowledge them, give them what they need. Easier said than done because we get caught up in. Me. Yep. Me. Mm. But this podcast don't exist basically on you. No. Nope. This podcast, that's I'm impossible. looking at the brothers and sisters that's, right. that's in here. That's impossible. It's impossible. We're more powerful as a unit than we are ever separated. Mm -hmm. And we are together because we believe in a thing. Those people who are here now believe in this. Mm. So what happens when it goes beyond podcasting? Because now we're part of the movement. Every mm -hmm. one of y'all are part of the movement. Mm -hmm. You cannot not hear this. Mm. What happens when we start thinking outside of the podcast and start saying every every conversation we need to have from this point on needs to be about that solidarity? Mm. Because if I have a thousand people mm. all saying and utilizing and recognizing the Yamasi, if I have a thousand people that just give a dollar, not 50, mm. not 100, just one. not 10, just one. Mm. That's $1,000 a month times 12. 12,000, yeah. That we use. Just not off one dollar. Just off one dollar. Wow. See, the dynamics change when we start and stop thinking too big and start mm. thinking big enough. Mm. This is the message of the Yamasi people. Mm. This is what we are really doing. This is who we are. Mm. This is what we did in the 1700s. This is what we did in the 1400s when they met us. This is what we did when they met our people on the shores and mm. we taught them, mm -hmm. showed them how to hunt, yep. how to farm, yeah, grow how to stay safe. Yeah. We have never changed as Yamasi people. Mm. That's why we were considered the fiercest of warriors. Mm. It wasn't just fighting, mm. knuckling up, mm. bows and arrows. Mm. The fierceness came because we had the ability to unite people through conversation. Hmm. My ancestors said, hey, we can't keep doing this. We're taking the L's. Hmm. At some point in time, at some point in time, they will want the Yamasi to have no more land than a turkey can fly over. And wow. if people ain't familiar with a turkey, turkeys don't fly that far. Hmm. And that's what they did. That's what the war was about. That we gave and we gave and we gave and we fought and we fought and we fought and we believed and we believed. Some of us believed you all. Some of us believed, you know, with the British. Some people believed the Spanish. Some people believed the French. We gave, we gave, we gave, we gave. And y'all just kept taking and taking and taking and taking mm. to the point where it just, just disrupted. It just came too much. Mm. Because I can only poke you in your head too many times before you as a man, no matter how passive you are. You're going to snap. I'm going to snap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to snap. Mm. And in summary, that snap eventually like, oh, we can't beat them. We got to write them out because our money is mm. stopping now. Mm. Oh, y'all can't beat them? Oh, we can't send them money. We're not going to. And so that's what happened. Mm. But we as the Yamasi people, the message that we're giving is still about unity. This, this whole thing that we did today was about historical narratives that lead up unto still unity. Mm -hmm. Reconnecting with ourselves, paying homage to our ancestors, mm. paying homage to your truth and your 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 reality, mm. but stop wanting to do it and trying to be by yourself doing it. That's right. That's right. Chief, you killed this. My very last question yes. on the way out because you've been so gracious with your time. Thank you. 90 plus minutes, man. Thank, Thank you. you. DNA tests, right? So many quote unquote black people take these tests, but we don't listen to that oral history of Big Mama. And on those tests, nine times out of 10 for, again, quote unquote black people will be Nigerian, West African, and it's mixed with this percentage, that percentage. But me looking at you, you looking at me, you don't say, oh, he's 20% this, 30% that. Right. Should we believe these tests? 
And second part of this question as well, um, according to these tests as well, why is it that the natives on the West Coast aren't as dark as the ones in the South? Is that an environmental or a climate thing, or how did that whole process start to? All right, so you asked several different questions. Right. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. the way the questions are formed, it's hard to really uh, itemize each one. Right. Uh, one of the things is, let's talk about the genetic test. First and foremost, this ain't something I made up. This is something that's online that people can research. When you look at um, Mr. Gates and the rest of these guys, there is an ongoing video on YouTube and TikTok where they talk about you know, the fallacy behind genetic mm -hmm. testing. Okay. They openly say that. That is a, it is like a, uh, what do they call that when you, novelty. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. For someone to identify your Masi, meaning that they would have to have the blood of my people back in the 1700s that they can test my blood against now. Mm. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. The blood that's being used is people who are identifying as native today. Why is it that synonymously, Native American always coincidentally have Asian in it? Mm. Native American slash Asian. Matter of fact, when I got my um, my voter's registration card, my voter's registration card, which is supposed my driver's license has Native American because they don't put that in the system no more. You used to have black and white and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Now it just says your name and all the stuff. Mm -hmm. But inside the system, they identify you. Mine says Native American. But my voter's card said Asian because that's what it translates mm -hmm. to because that is the dynamics and that is the template that they're using today. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Because they've proven, and you can guys, you can YouTube this and find it for yourselves. Look it up. There's a YouTube video circulating where they talk about the real Native Americans. Mm -hmm. and, I, and if I'm not mistaken, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. Who are the first people? And they talk about, then they show the powwows and those running mm -hmm. around now. And if you notice, an Asian can put on a headdress, powwow, regalia, and stuff like that, and pass as a Native American. Because those are the Mongolos that came in from Siberia mm -hmm. that came over through the continent or the land, the land bridge. Mm -hmm. Now, let's do one better. Let's make common sense. We were all to school. And when we went to school, they talked about the continent, and it was called a Greek word, Pangea. Yeah, it was all connected. So yeah. it's all connected. Mm. And here's what I tell people in every conversation. You're believing that as the world separated, that everyone that was African ran to Africa. We all got together. All the black people just, all the black people just ran to Africa. Wow. All the Asian people ran to Asia. Mm. All the European people ran to Europe. Mm. Even though science has proven, and I'm just going to use this loosely because there's an older now genetic or, or genome that's been proven, but it still always goes back to a black woman. Science has proven that everyone came from one person called Lulu Amalu, yeah, yeah. Lucy. Yeah, it was Lucy. That's right. Now, they, they have an older bone that they found as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know the purpose behind this mm -hmm. because it may be now a white person because that's what they like to do, mm -hmm. play these games. But at this point in time, DNA, mitochondria, which everyone needs to know, mitochondria is the oldest, mm -hmm. right? That's right. DNA that you can find within the women, mm -hmm. which is why men, and I, and I hate to deal with everybody's mm -hmm. ego, men are defective women because mm -hmm. a woman is an XX First, chromosome, yeah. right? Yeah. And men are XY. Yeah. And we are XY based on a broken or a defective chromosome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there is a, a genetic proof that everyone is connected to one woman. Why do we... Let's do one better. West African never existed. There is not a, 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 a genetic mm -hmm. person that exists in West Africa. That's a terminology used. Yeah. It is a place and a region. How do I prove that you have West African in you? A oh, made, if, made name too. Yeah. Uh, on a made up name. Wow. Yeah. What they say? Oh, well, whatever <laughs> is in the West African coast, mm. your DNA, because our environment determines where we are. Right is inside of that genetic makeup, mm. right? Mm. Which now doesn't make sense to me because if you're using the genetics of an environment, meaning that the air quality, the trees that are only um, exist in West Africa, uh, the pollen, the dirt, mm. the sand, all this is within my DNA because we have genetic markers inside of us. Mm. If that only exists there, but you can find out that I have 45% West African in me, mm. And 10% sub Harian, is that their favorite thing, yeah, yeah. or Asian? Why is it that my ancestors were here, according to you, 400 years, and I'm not American? Hmm. Dang. 
By this point, yeah. Oh, it's almost because, half of a thousand years. Hold on, because <clears throat> I am what my ancestors was. Yeah, where they lived, what they breathed, what they ate. Mm. Those are genetic markers, right? Mm. You break your bone right now. Guess what? Your child have that scar in his DNA where that right. bone was broken. Right. Right. Correct. If I'm wrong, y'all please stop me. <laughs> So if we've been here for the last 400 years, how do you say I'm majority West African mm. over something? And if, if we do our, our playbacks, mm. and I'm not saying this, I'm not going to say this right. I forgot. It was so many, I think eight generations is 276. And I'm, my numbers are wrong, mm -hmm. so please forgive me. But eight generations back is 276 people. Mm -hmm. Two, maybe 226, 224. But y'all know that eight generations is a whole lot of back. Mm -hmm. Why is that DNA more dominant mm. in your DNA test? Mm. And you're talking about that branch, that tree. Mom, dad, mom's mom, dad, mom, dad, dad, mom, dad, mom, larger, mom, dad. Larger. Right, you get what I'm saying? Right. And it just gets larger and larger, but then it gets less and less. Mm. Right? The more we add water to something, it dilutes it. That's correct. So how the hell is my DNA coming back 45% of something mm. from a country that I haven't been in for over 400 years? Wow. I'll leave you to think about that. And pay for that too. <laughs> and pay for the that. same people who are pay for that to tell and you where they for stole you from. One hundred percent. Wow. One hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, the, the, you know, that is a and and this is a very uh, rudimentary answer. Mm -hmm. It's very simplistic in nature. I'm not a scientist by far. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm using common sense in this, and I'm using what they do say they use in order to identify. And I want people to, to understand the, the dynamics of it. Mm -hmm. But more than anything, investigate. Mm -hmm. Investigate. You're giving your money to someone or something to, to identify you, to prove who you are. When the Native tribes and Native American people, they don't do that. You know how they do it? How do they do it? Who's your grandmama? <laughs> simple. Real simple. Wow. Who's her mother? All right, cool. <laughs> oh, so you're 1 19th, 1 64th, blah, blah, blah. I done met white people who say, oh, I'm 164th Cherokee, and they that hold kills cards. Me, man. That kills me. I that have not met me. a white person yet who ain't had an Indian, a Cherokee yep. Indian princess. Yep. So all y'all related? Mm. Mm. Oh, my grandmother was a, uh, I don't know how true this is. She, she's an Indian princess. I'm Cherokee. Now I know my skin is white and that, that, that. And then I say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm Seminole. I'm your Masi. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all mixed breed? I didn't ask you, was wow. you mixed breed? Are you African and black? Because there's no way he could be native. Wow. Indoctrination. 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 Because again, they will grow up walk, watching the same it's iron Western Cody, movies, man. right? Iron See, I'm Cody. always going to go back because I'm, I'm a songwriter. Yeah, so I'm going to take it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so no, you know me, honestly, we live in a world now today we can question, we can ask questions, and everything that you want now is right before you. This, again, this ain't not something Chief Seku is making up. This is stuff that everything I said to you, you can go look out for yourself. That's right. Um, and there's going to be debates on it because you got people who want to believe the narrative, and, 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 and I'm a Boondocks fan, so. Oh, you got hey, that's uncle, my favorite show, man. Uncle so Ruckus. You. So you got your Uncle Ruckus, right? The greatest thing ever happened was a white man. <laughs> I get it, right? <laughs> but then you have the people who say, and, and, and believe this truly, there is less of those naysayers than there are people who are astute. Mm. There is more historical information that can prove everything that I've said than there is people who can disprove it. That's right. But all it takes is one person to set you in motion to make you think against what you've been taught. That's right. And the most powerful thing ever happened was mm. when uh, I did a documentary called By Any Other Name, mm. okay, from Kennesaw uh, College, Stephen Gale did it. Oh, wow. And he brought in his 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 uh, genealogist, the biologist, the archaeologist, anthropologist. Something one of them said was so powerful. He said, "Every picture you see hmm. of a black Indian, that is historical evidence." He said, "Every oral conversation you have about your grandmothers or your grandfathers is oral evidence. Hmm. It's how we tie in to the his the, the history that we're seeing documented by the settlers." Hmm. We was recently invited by an anthropologist, uh, excuse me, archaeologist, to, to who was, you know, uncovering pottery and things of that nature of our people. Mm. And she said, well, we call this and we call this and it's just a rudimentary, rudimentary term that archaeologists use when we really don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. So then I'm saying, well, this makes more sense for my people to do this than this. And this is why she needed us there mm. to be able to say. Instead of making an assumption, 
because 90% of science and history is assumptions. Yeah, it's all theoretical. It's all theoretical, yeah. right? Yeah. There is no need <clears throat> to rewrite a book about the Yamasi mm. from Florida to South Carolina right. if the, definitively the Yamasi mm. no longer exists. But when you start taking and these historians say, we're not pushing that narrative anymore because everything we read now through all the memoirs, of all the different people living in different areas so the Yamasi do exist. So now what do they do, the historians do? They take all these memoirs and they go to all these different areas and they take this information and then they backtrack the oral history quote it. Yeah. and stories yeah. of the people wow. to put together the new narrative right. and the new truth. That's right. So now they're saying, not what I'm saying, mm. I know who I am. Mm. The Yamasi aren't extinct. Mm. They were just renamed. I didn't make this up. They're doing more research than me. Mm. And that's what we're saying now. Pay attention to what's happening. There is no need for anthropologists or genealogists to rewrite history or get a grant to redo information that is 100% solidified as facts. That's right. Right? Yeah. What we're learning now today is everything that their ancestors thought was factual isn't factual. We're now learning more. Mm. The natives knew of the star constellation before we ever knew it. That's right. Oh, the natives, which was pagans, were saying trees have life. They were pagans. They believed in things and animals who had spirits. And you got tree huggers now. And now, you, what, what are they doing? Yeah. Everything that the native people were sharing with them, they're revisiting yep. and saying, oh, wow, they had something here. They got something. Herbalists now, too. Herbalists. Yeah. So, no, you know what I mean? Let's, let's rethink and let's reevaluate the way we think. Let's stop taking old information and making it applicable and mm -hmm. our facts. Now we are in a point in time to where we don't even understand the dynamics of being able to read because we don't read no more. We're now looking at Scroll. TikTok shorts yep. and our attention span is that big mm -hmm. because we're looking for value and things that only is giving us that endorphin rush yep. for 15 seconds. Yep. And we're scrolling up, we're scrolling up, we're scrolling Stop all that. The greatest thing you can ever do is find out who you are. Mm. The greatest thing you can ever do is find out who your people were. The biggest honor you can ever do and the blessing that you can get is through acknowledging them. There is nothing I did myself. Mm. Everything that has happened for the Yamasi people through me is because I gave myself to my ancestors to say, whatever you want from me, whatever you need me to do, let's go. Mm. I walked away from a music industry and millionaire status. Mm. I had a choice. I could have got back in. Mm. I was given an option. They was making millions or making history. Mm. That's a bar. Chief, you bodied this interview. Thank you, brother. Next time, if it's later, if it's sooner, okay. hey, we got to have a part two of this because 100%. I still have 10 million more questions. Like, 100%, brother. So bro. many facts that like, I'm trying to learn from you, all of that, but keep doing great work. Thank it's you. amazing, you know, seeing someone who looks like me sharing this knowledge, this information that's needed because our families talk about these stories, but seeing you, a person who knows these stories, sharing that, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Language should not be cheap and least school. So, and, and, and so much of that is also, we have to start getting back to the tongue of our people. That's right. We start, we have to start doing what our people once did. You know what I'm saying? And speaking that language. Mm -hmm. So I thank you, brother, for everything you all doing. I thank you Much all love. for everything you all are doing and having yes. me here. Yes. And I appreciate it. And and, and again, if, if I can, mm -hmm. you know, if you guys want to know more information and you want to learn about my ask. tribe, yes. um, reach out to us. We're the official proven documented Yamasi mm -hmm. people. Uh, Instagram is Yamasi Tribe yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. Reach out to us. You can't miss it because you'll see my face. That's right. Um, and then, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to start back up our mm -hmm. our little personal YouTube channel mm -hmm. for our family called We Are Gentle. Mm -hmm. um, because we we have a lot of things going on that we want to share with people. Yes. But uh, anything that we can do for you all, let mm -hmm. me know. Thank you, Chief. And uh, whatever we can help you with, let yes. us know. Thank you, Chief. Again, I had a phenomenal time. Thank Keep you, up all the great work. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Instagram Live next time that you're on. Thanks. I'll be tapped in. I love it. Appreciate it. Keep you, making them mad, too. <laughs> hey, you are protected, man. So you, thank keep you, going. Y'all, make sure to tap in. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this content. Support the Chief, the Yamasi people as well. Learn about where you come from and where we come from. Learn about your stories, your history, and your people. Again, bless be your host, Caleb Smith. Until next time, peace.